Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. This is the third video in my series about Home Assistant dashboard cards. And today, I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorites, the Picture Elements card. With this card, you can create virtually any dashboard you can imagine. If you haven't seen the previous videos, I definitely recommend checking them out. All right, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right in. In this video, I'll show you how to create simple but powerful dashboards using the Picture Elements card, like this one, or many others you can design your own way. First, I click the Edit Dashboard pencil at the top right to enter Edit Mode. Then, I click the Add View icon. For the layout, I select Panel, since I'll only have one main card. I name it Test, and hit Save. Now in this empty dashboard view, I click Add Card, scroll down through the list, and select Picture Elements. In the card configuration, I start by deleting the default element. I want a clean card. Next, I open the Card Options menu. Here I could add a title, but I usually skip it because it takes up space on the screen, and I prefer to use that space for other elements. Then, I set the image path for the background. Later, I'll show you how to upload your own images to the local image folder. You can also define a different image for dark mode, so when Home Assistant switches themes, your dashboard updates automatically. But for now, I'll remove it and keep just one image. You can even choose a camera feed as your background image. For example, if I select my camera, the live view becomes the dashboard background. Perfect for creating a control panel where you can manage your devices and instantly see the results. You can switch between auto and live mode for the camera, but I recommend keeping it on auto. That way, Home Assistant manages resources better. It's not necessary to stream live video when the dashboard isn't active. You can also adjust how the image looks using the state filter. Let me show you. I'll change the background to my garage camera, which is currently unavailable. Now, if I add different styles for each camera state in the state filter box, I get different visual effects. In this case, when the camera is unavailable, it blurs the image by 8 pixels and turns it black and white. If I reduce the blur value, the image becomes clearer. So, you can customize how each camera state looks directly in your dashboard. For now, I'll remove the filters in the camera feed because I just want a static background image. In the Visibility tab, you can define when the card is visible based on conditions. When I click Add Condition, I get several options to choose from. I'll select Entity State and pick the dining room light as my entity. Then I'll make the card visible only when the light is on. I save the settings, and when I exit edit mode, the image disappears because the light is off. If I turn the dining room light on and go back to the view, the image appears. When I turn the light off again, it disappears. Finally, I'll delete that condition so the card stays visible all the time. Now let's start adding elements to our picture elements card. The first one I'll add is the State Badge element. I click Edit to change the card settings, and under Elements, I select Add New Element. From the list that appears, I choose State Badge. By default, it comes with the next Dawn entity, but I don't want to use that one, so I change it to the People entity, which is a sensor that detects if someone is in the living room. You can see the badge now appearing over the background image. If I expand the Interactions section, I can see two types of actions, tap behavior and hold behavior. When I click on the drop-down under tap behavior, a list appears with all the available actions that can be triggered by each element. These behaviors are shared across all elements, and I'll go through them one by one. If I leave the default option, more info, when I click the badge, a pop-up appears showing details about that entity. In this case, it shows the motion detection history. There's also another option called More Info, which does exactly the same thing. Next, there's Toggle. With this option, I can switch something between on and off. However, since I'm using a sensor, I can't toggle its state, but I'll show an example of this later. The Navigate Tap behavior lets me move from one view or dashboard to another inside Home Assistant. So, I select it and set the Navigate Path to TV Remote. Then I hit Save. 
I already have another view here, my TV remote. If you want to see how I made it, I'll leave a link in the description. Now when I click the badge, it takes me straight to that view. This is really useful if your house has multiple floors and you want to switch between dashboards for each floor. Let's go back to the card. I can edit any element by clicking the pencil icon on the right. Next is the URL option. This allows you to open an external web page. To demonstrate, I'll use the Home Assistant website. I hit Save and then Done. Now if I click the badge, it opens the Home Assistant web page. Back in edit mode, the next option is Perform Action. This tap behavior lets you run a specific action or service in Home Assistant. For example, you can use it to turn on a light, start an automation, or trigger a script. In my case, I want to toggle the alarm on and off, so I'll use the Toggle Helper action. If you want to know more about helpers, check out the video I made on that topic. Then, I choose the alarm entity as the target, so when I click the badge, it will turn the alarm on or off. I'll show you all of these working later. Next, we have the Assist option. Here you can choose one of your assistants, and when you click the badge, you can ask it something, like the time or to turn a light on or off. And finally, there's Do Nothing, which is self-explanatory. When you click the badge, nothing happens. For now, I'll leave it set to navigate to the TV remote view. One important step is positioning the element. I want to place the badge over the living room area, so I enter the desired position in the style box. Then I hit save, and you can see the badge appear right over the living room on the image. Now I'll add the next element, the state icon. I click add new element and select state icon. Then I delete the default entity and enter living room. Next, I want to change the icon to something that better represents the device. So in the icon box, I search for and select the light bulb icon. I also add a title to make it easier to identify. The show state color option defines whether the icon's color changes based on the entity's state. If I turn it off, the icon will always look the same, regardless of whether the light is on or off. Let's set the behavior first so I can show you how it works. As you can see, the list of actions in the behavior section is the same as before. I'll select toggle. Now when I click the icon, the living room light turns on, but the icon doesn't change color. If I enable show state color and click the icon again, the light turns on and the icon changes color, giving me a quick visual cue that the light is on. If I leave more info selected for the hold behavior, then when I click and hold the icon, a pop-up appears showing the living room switch and I can turn it on or off from there as well. Finally, I want to position the icon over the living room on the image, so I enter the desired coordinates in the style box. I hit save, and there it is, the icon placed right over the living room. Now I can easily turn my living room light on and off directly from the dashboard. Now I'll add the next element, the state label. I click add new element and select state label. Then I delete the default entity and enter alarm, so I can see whether the alarm is on or off. In the attribute box, I can choose which value I want to display in the label. In this case, there are only a few options, but depending on the type of entity, like TVs, switches, or RGB lights, you'll often find several different attributes to choose from. I won't select any attribute here, so it will use the default one, which is the main state of this helper entity. And as you can see on the floor plan, the word on already appears. To make it clearer, I'll add a prefix so it forms a full sentence that tells me what that on refers to. Now on the view, it says, the alarm is on. I could also add a suffix if I wanted to include text after the value, but I'll leave it empty for now. For the tap behavior, I'll select toggle because I want to be able to turn the alarm on and off just by clicking the state label. So now, if I click the label, it turns the alarm off, and if I click it again, it turns it back on. Finally, I reposition it where I want it, hit save, and there it is, right at the top of the view where I can easily toggle the alarm on and off. Now I'll add the next element, the perform action. I click add new element and select perform action. Then I change the title because I want this element to run an action that tells me the room temperatures. I move it to the bottom of the screen so it's easy to access. Next, I select the action I want to run. 
There are lots of options to choose from. Some come built into Home Assistant, and others are ones you can create yourself, like scripts, automations, or toggle helpers, and many more. In this case, I'll select a script I created that announces the room temperatures. I hit save, and now when I click the text on the view, it runs the script and tells me the temperatures of each room. The living room temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. The bedroom temperature is 21 degrees Celsius. The next element is the icon. I click Add New Element and select Icon. Then I change it to a battery icon, add a title, and select the iPad charger entity. For the tap behavior, I choose Toggle once again. I reposition the icon and change its color to red so it's easy to spot. After hitting Save, I can see the icon placed over the office area. Now when I click it, it turns the iPad charger on or off. It's a simple icon, but later I'll show you how it can be really helpful. Now let's move on to the next element, the image element. And this is where things start to get really interesting. With images, you can create amazing dashboards. You just have to use your imagination. You can build a floor plan that lights up when a room's light is on, or design control panels for anything you want. I've made some myself, one for Halloween, one for Christmas, an alarm clock, a TV remote control with special features, and a few others. In this video, I'll show you two different examples, an animated floor plan and a console-style control panel to control lights and display information on a screen. But first, let me show you how to upload images to your Home Assistant local folder. I open the file editor, click the folder icon in the top left, and scroll down until I find the www folder. If you don't have it, you'll need to create it. This is the local folder where your images are stored. Inside it, I create a new folder called Picture Elements. Then I open that folder and click the Upload File icon at the top. Now I upload my images. Back in edit mode, I change the card image path to one of the images I just uploaded. Now I can see the base image for my custom control panel. Next, I'll add the switches up here to control the devices I want. To do that, I click Add New Element and select Image. I start by adding the path to the image of the switch in its off position. It appears on the dashboard in its original size. Then in the state image box, I add both switch images, one for off and one for on, each with its corresponding state. This way, only the correct image is shown depending on the entity state. Now I reposition and resize the image to fit correctly. Using the width tag, I can scale it to the exact size I want. Once more, I set the tap behavior to toggle, and then I select the entity, in this case, the kitchen light. With everything configured, I hit save, and here it is, the first button on my control panel. Now I can check in my floor plan that the kitchen light is currently off. If I go back to the control panel and click the switch image, the kitchen light turns on, and the image updates to show the switch in the on position. If I look again at the floor plan, I can see that the kitchen light is now on. Back in the control panel, I turn it off and enter edit mode. The best way to add more switches is to duplicate the element. Then I just change the entity and the position of the button. So for example, I set the entity to living room and move it to the right spot. I can see that the living room light is off and when I click the button, it turns on. It works exactly like the first one, just for a different room. Now I just repeat these steps for all the devices I want to include in the control panel. I have all these elements that I've created, but they're all out of place. I can change their location and move them into the screen area. I'll start with the icon element. All I need to do is adjust its style to reposition it. Next, I'll add another state label element to display what time my alarm is set for. I add it, Set the entity to alarm time, adjust its position, and change the color. After saving, I can see the alarm time displayed right on the panel. If I go to my alarm clock view and change the time, then come back to the control panel, it updates automatically. Now I'll just organize the rest of the elements. I'll speed this part up. I think by now you've got the idea. Here's an improved version. Now let's create a new view to build a floor plan. 
This is just a quick demo of an interactive animated floor plan. If you want the full process for creating the floor plan images, check the dedicated video I made. I add a new view and call it plan. Then I add a picture elements card and replace the default card image with the floor plan base image I uploaded earlier. With the base image in place, I add an image element and set its entity to living room. This image is just the living room area from the floor plan. I'll use it to show the room lighting when the light is on. I set both tap and hold behavior to nothing because I don't want this image to trigger any action. Then I insert the image path for the previously uploaded overlay. To hide the overlay when the light is off, I set the opacity to zero in the style box. That's one way to do it. There are other methods too. If I turn the living room light on, the overlay appears on top of the background image but at first it's the wrong size and position. So I adjust the style values until the overlay lines up perfectly with the floor plan. To improve visibility, I add a brightness value in the style and tweak it until the overlay looks right. Now the living room lights up correctly when the light is on. Next, I add another image element. This one will be a switch to toggle the living room light. I set the entity to living room and the tap behavior to toggle. For the image paths, I use the on switch image for the main path and the off switch image in the state image field, so the correct graphic shows depending on the light state. Then I resize and reposition the switch into place. After saving, the switch appears on the control panel. When I click it, the living room light toggles and the switch image updates from off to on, and the living room overlay lights up on the floor plan. One important detail, the order of the images matters. I added the living room overlay first, and then the switch, so the switch sits on top and receives clicks. If the overlay were above the switch, even with transparent parts, it would capture the click and the switch action wouldn't run. So make sure your interactive elements are stacked in the correct order. That's the core workflow. Add an overlay image for the room, hide it with opacity, align and brighten it, then add clickable switch images on top. Repeat those steps for each room or device you want to animate, and you'll have a fully interactive floor plan. And that's it for this video. Now you know how to use picture elements to create amazing interactive dashboards, from custom control panels to fully animated floor plans. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, don't forget to hit the like button. It really helps the channel grow. And if you haven't already, subscribe so you don't miss the next tutorials and ideas I'll be sharing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.